Welcome. You are listening to the Cover to Cover podcast, lively conversations with cutting edge authors, hosted by Mary Elizabeth Jackson. Mary is an author, advocate, and educator. Join us to find your new favorite author, book, or inspiration. And now, here's Mary. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So excited to be here today. I have an absolutely amazing guest. We just met last week at the iconic Bluebird Cafe in Nashville, Tennessee. If you've never been, you got to stop by and just buy a (laughs) t-shirt. But it's a really awesome, amazing place. And Claire Cunningham has traveled. She lives here now, but she's come all the way across the pond in Ireland. We're so excited that she's here. She is uh, a little bit about her before we start real quick. The, the Josie Music Award crowned her Artist of the Year in 2022, Vocalist of the Year in 21, and Folk Americana Artist of the Year in 2020. And the other cool thing is she just made her debut on the Grand Ole Opry stage last month. I mean, oh my gosh, how cool is that, right? So we're going to bring her uh, on right now to start chatting with us. So Claire Cunningham, welcome. Hello, hello. Thank you for the intro. (laughs) So I have to tell you, when I saw Claire last Tuesday night, she had on a beautiful sparkly sequin uh, silver top and she had matching boots. And I was like, oh, my daughters would love those boots. And so (laughs) <laughs> so I was like, I have to meet that woman. <laughs> and then I got to hear her sing and I was like, oh, I definitely have to meet this woman. She's so amazing. So Claire, I want to ask you, like I, I told everybody you're from Ireland, but you know, your whole life, everyone has a journey, but your whole life, did you know you wanted to be a singer songwriter or was it something that was kind of, you fell into no, it was always on the cards. Yeah, for sure. And the the evidence I have for that was, I think it was, I was three or three and a half. And somebody asked me, like, what do you want to be, you know, when you grow up? And my answer was a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> and like, she looks like a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> rock and roll definitely was uh, in the past for me. And, and I did have a career in that. Um, so yeah, as far as the aesthetics go, <laughs> people are always like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I okay. love it. It's so awesome. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, definitely. Um, it has been in my bones since, since like I could literally, you know, walk and talk and it's just, I've known nothing else but music. It's always been, you know, the forefront of everything I've ever done. So yeah, so blessed. Yeah, absolutely. So the other really cool thing about Claire is that she has a platform and we're going to be talking about her platform. You know, I really love when someone is brave enough to bring in their real life story into the work they're doing and and, and then choose as a platform to help others. Because, uh, you know, and I also think Claire, you know, through the pandemic, one of the positive, beautiful things from it is how much more awareness there is about mental health and that is your platform. And so let's talk about that. And it's a passion of you, yours. It it is. It's a huge, huge, huge passion of mine. Um, And simply because I've endured a lot in my life, but for good reason, you know, so um, I just feel because I have been helped and I have gotten to a place in life where I've managed to not overcome everything because, you know, it, it, life is a journey. But I feel it's my duty in in coming the other side of adversity or trauma or abuse that I now get to help others and pay forward for getting through the dark times. Um And I would never advocate for anything that I don't physically feel that I have had experience in. I think that's the best teaching in life is by getting advice off of somebody who, you know, has been through something and it's a way of connecting with people. And I'm, I'm honestly like as, as crazy as it sometimes sounds, I'm so grateful for every single bad moment that has happened in my life and, uh, and it spans, there's a lot. There is a lot. I when I started writing it all down, I realized, oh, okay, <laughs> I've been through quite a journey. Um, but you know, growing up, and when I even sought help for the first time, I think it was around twenty-seven. Um, 
I didn't realize how many people go through um, these kind of adversities or have had similar lifestyles. And to know that you're not alone, that was nearly, that was a pivotal point in my life, grabbing a book that the um, therapist had recommended and reading what I thought was like my way of being. And I was like, whoa, this is like, that was revolutionary for me because I was like, wow, that's like somebody took how I felt and put it on paper. I feel like if I can do that for others, then I feel like I can connect and maybe it will help people. I think people still have to go through it though. You know, I, I, I believe that it's, it's, it's important that we do have hardship. And so by going through things as humans together, it means we can connect together. And so now that I have a platform, now that I have audiences dotted around the globe, let's say, I can then start showing people the real raw side of what it's like to go through something, but also by coming out the other side too. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And and I and I know I feel it in my in my whole heart and my gut that, that there is a reason why I've gone through as much as I have. And now that I do get to sing and talk, you know, because it's not just singing, you know, you're you're on a platform and you're able to introduce a song and what's the story behind the song, you know? And then the lyrics within a song can resonate with somebody that you've never met, but yet you've told a story or you've given them hope and inspiration and that to me is just oh it's just it it fuels me so much it really does so yeah (laughs) oh my gosh like every word that you speak you can hear your passion and your heart and you touch on something very important and that is the gratitude you have for your journey and the hardships trials and tribulations that takes you when you can get to that place that takes you from being a victim in your life to a victor. And it doesn't mean that it everything's healed, but it means that you have an appreciation and you can see the other side of what happened in your life. And those are survival tools. And it makes a difference, I think, in your life from being like a victim to a victor. Wouldn't you agree? I couldn't agree more. And and that's why we, we can choose to be victims if we want. And for sure, like, don't get me wrong, I'm not downplaying anything that anybody goes through that you're not a victim in that moment. But whether you hold on to that victim mentality for your entire life, you're just, you're creating a lifestyle where you never get to heal. You never let to, to let go, to forgive. And when I say forgive, I have forgiven people who have done the worst things that you can do on a human. However, that doesn't mean I'm condoning it. It doesn't mean that that's okay, but it's allowing me the space to just give it away and to start really focusing on me. Because if I harbor hate, guilt, shame, all those things that we typically do, then I'm the one who's ending up sick and I'm going to spread that energy. And I think it's important that we all check in with ourselves and it's a timely thing it's not like it's an overnight you know oh I'm okay now and I forgive that person you know sometimes it does take a while and I also also say that you have to feel to heal so be in those emotions be angry if you need to be be sad but don't let it be a long-term commitment to those feelings that you need to really let go and release because until you do that your your cup is going to be so full of all the gunk that it's not going to be able to, you know, get rid of what it needs to get rid of and then start ingesting, you know, um, a healthier mindset and a forgiving mindset. And, you know, it's it's in the Bible. You learn to forgive and you will be forgiven too. And and it's just, it's it's really, they're, they're simple methods that seem simple, hard to do so I always want people like to know that like it's not like I've ever just forgave I I spent decades holding on to different feelings but when you also realize and I want people to also think about this whoever wrongs you or does you wrong whether it's bullying whether it's sexual abuse whether it's you name it why did they do that where is that is their hurt coming from? And again, it's not 
giving them the permission to do it, but it's checking in and thinking, well, they are obviously traumatized. Maybe they were sexually abused. Maybe they had certain issues and they're just, so if you can learn that it stops at you so that you don't continue on that cycle, um, I think that's really important. And I think that's where we can be the change and, and help others if you just learn to make it stop within you so you don't keep doing the domino effect I guess oh my gosh you've touched on so many gold nuggets and like you know if you stay stuck and things like that you just continue to give your power away to whoever has harmed you and we got to take our power back and it doesn't ever mean that what somebody did to you is okay it just means that you know you don't have power over me anymore and then that's one of the first steps to healing, right? Is to being able, being able to forgive or at least release it and let it go. So you allow that healing to come in. And, you know, you, you just, everything you said is so powerful. And, you know, what do you hope when you're singing and writing a song and thinking about your platform or looking for a place to speak. So anybody out there listening who would love to have Claire speak on their stage, podcast, live stream, whatever it is, what message do you hope to get out to, to folks? My main message is that it is going to be okay. And there are going to be tough days. You are not going to live this life without hardship. That's a fact. But learn to relish the bad moment as best you can when it's happening and realize that everything that's happening to you is not against you. It is for you, whether it's for you personally in that moment, whether it's for the future or whether it's maybe for you to have to go through it so you can be a voice of inspiration and hope for somebody else. So I just want people to know that there, everybody goes through something has been through or will go through you're not absolutely alone you never are you're never going to be and I highly suggest people to really check in on their mental health and their physical well-being and their spirituality because those three combinations those three combined I mean will help you develop the best version of you that you can become Um, And there's no quick fix to healing. There's no quick fix to peace. You got to find that and you got to go through the gunk to get there. Um, And no pill and no short term release of any whatever addiction can give you or maybe a substance. It may give you short term relief, but it's definitely not a long term. um, It's not it's it's not for long term use and you can't avoid avoid it is something people want to and like I include it sometimes like it's easier not to to maybe think about that not to address something but it is very important that you learn to cope with what's happening and talk about it and be open and vulnerable with people because the more open and vulnerable we get the more people feel like they can too if everybody around you is smelling roses and pretending that everything's okay then you're not going to really want to open up or when you do you're going to be feel ostracized where where if everybody's on the same page you know then then we can destigmatize these kind of conversations that seem to be still stigmatized right now uh, yeah, and we think they should be less and less and, and people should feel so much more open or able to be open and feel safe about it. So you definitely have to have a safe environment um, to be able to express those things. And if somebody has lived a life of suppression by abuse in their life, that's kind of an impossible, almost impossible thing for them to do. But anyone listening out there, You know, if that has been your life, there is hope. You know, Claire is sitting here telling you, I'm telling you, you know, other things I've been in my life too, there is hope. And um, you got to talk about it. You can't just keep it inside forever because that will manifest itself into something physical. Um, (laughs) You know, very much so. If you, you know, read the science behind it or you know, what happens to the body and 
with emotions and mental feelings and stress, you know, it, it is really bad for us. So, um, you know, I had lunch the other day with a friend of yours who you introduced me to, who just thinks so much of you and just says the most wonderful things about you and how just your heart is in every single thing that you do. And I haven't known you that long, but I've known you. It only took me a moment to figure that out and see that about you. So, you know, that in itself will help carry your message really far because you're very transparent and uh, you're, you know, you're walking in path of an integrity and, you know, you're just kind of like, Hey, I'm here. This is my story. And I want to help, you know, yeah. and, and that's really important. Yeah. I, I, and thank you for saying that. And, and, and it always just, it makes me nearly emotional when people say anything nice, you know, because I'm just, just here doing what I can and being led the way I believe that the good Lord is just leading me. Um, and, you know, it has been tough. I don't think people realize that even, even when I started coming out with things a couple of years ago, like, I, you know, I have to remember and it's hard because I've got family who never, we never really talked about these things and being in the public eye and putting, you know, our names out there. It's not just me, right? And so I know that's been hard for family members as well. And for just people who knew me and know me, who are learning about things that have happened to me that I may not, I never was open about. Of course I wasn't. And so but it's not it's not it's not my place anymore to keep this in and as much as people are always like heal yourself before you heal others uh, this has been a work in progress for a long time but the best healing comes from being honest you know and I felt like more people can connect I because I think on the outward appearance of what I do and how I am people are very like oh you've got it all like you know it's all great and I'm like okay so that's why I honestly when I started putting I say pen to paper I didn't even use a single pen when I wrote my memoir and it, it, it just like started like flowing out of me and it's like the the most honest I've ever ever been and I want people to see that you see one version, you see this version online, or you see the the go getter, but you don't realize that the fuel behind that all comes from so much trauma. Mm. It's like, and there is reasons why we are the way we are. And even when I was writing, I was realizing some things in those moments, and that's so beautiful, you know, because we all have a story. And we all have a personality that lends itself to why we are, why we think the way we do, why we react, what triggers us, all these things. Yep. You know? And they're not excuses. I will never use anything I've been through as an excuse to be a certain way um, because you've got to check in with yourself. You've got to learn to, you know, realize that sometimes like, you know, things I do and say are not correct. And I have to realize that, no, now I'm more open to maybe actually that's why this is the way. Or maybe I should act this way. You know, every day is a learning day. It should be. <laughs> you know? right. Yeah, it should be. And, you know, we if you, if you think about it, um, in our adulthood, you know, there's something when I when I when I talk uh, or have the opportunity to it. Uh, I think there are three things with adults that are very important. And one is ownership and responsibility. And two is what are we resonating at? What is our energy flowing? What, what are we putting out energetically? Like, is the mood happy, sad? What is it, you know? And the other is um, what are our motivations? And as adults, we are motivated highly by traumas in our childhood. And most of us don't know that's happening. Why we're doing what we do, right? Broken, abuse, abandonment, whatever it happened to you, right? And so, you know, one of the most important things is expanding our awareness and coming into a place of going, oh, so that's why I do what I do, or I did what I did, you know? Oh, I don't want to do that because I'm not coming from a place of love. I'm coming from a place of fear, you know? So, I mean, that, that's very important yeah. uh, in, the, in part of this growth. 
100% and even just you saying that I know the Lord is speaking to me as well through that and and this is what I mean when I tell people I am you're always learning on the go you know yeah. because you still you uh, we do evolve but yeah there are certain things we do carry over um and uh, you know a lot of people I I think and me included years ago thought that I could just move to another country it'll be fine <laughs> Buy a new house, it'll be better. Have a new car, do all these things, but you don't realize your internal baggage goes with you everywhere. And so, <laughs> yes, like momentarily, you'll feel great and it'll feel new and shiny. Uh, hence, why a lot of relationships are amazing at the beginning. You know, everyone talks about that honeymoon phase, and um, <laughs> and then suddenly everything because people kind of put on an act first of all sometimes it, to conceal who they really are and also because it's new it's exciting but then when the gunk starts coming up and you're getting triggered or whatever that's why a lot of relationships end up hitting that point where it's like oh this isn't as good as we maybe thought it was. right right and, and I only know that from just people telling me and I'm, I'm coming up to my own conclusions on that but I feel you know it's like a new job a new car anything that's just sparkly and new at the beginning just you know unless you really heal from within you know everything around you is going to feel less and less shiny the more you're around it you know? I know I I know and you know we could talk about this forever I <laughs> I know we could and I'm gonna I want to have you back on but let's let's touch base really quickly and then I want you to tell everybody where they can find you and find your music um, what is, what projects or project is, is really happen is important right now in your life that you're working on? Yeah, so excited for this uh, current project. Um, it's called Helping Hand. It's an album. It's going to most likely have 10 songs and the, they're just getting finished up in the studio now. Um, it is an inspirational faith-based hope, everything combined in one album and I have not yet done a solo album I've done solo EPs which are smaller um um compilations of songs but this this has um a whole theme of how the Lord no matter what I've done and where I've been and all the things I've endured he has been the common denominator um amongst all of the things um but there's there are songs on there that I really hope that people can resonate with um, because it's just me pouring out what I feel or it's songs that he has given me in those moments. Um, so I'm praying that it comes out by early summer. Um, it's just hard to tell because obviously I'm getting the mixes back as we speak. Got to get them into master, and but I already have my front cover, which the Lord supplied uh, in a random photo shoot that I had. So no. um, I never it wasn't even meant to be intentional, and it, so I've got I'm I'm ready to go with it. I'm very very excited about this one. So the first single is going to come out off of it um, on the 28th of April, uh, which is not too long to go. Um, mm. Yeah, it's called No Need for God. And I'm already getting messages from people <laughs> that are like, I don't like that title. I'm like, okay, clearly, if you know me and some of these people do, I'm like, you know I'm all about the Lord. So there's a little twist in this one. <laughs> right. And that's good, you know, to have that creative twist. And you know what Richard was telling Elizabeth and I about it on when we were at lunch. And, and he was telling us about the title. And then he was describing, you know, he was explaining it to us because that was my first thought too. I, I was like, wow, that's an interesting title. Wait, did he just say what he just said? You know, but the good thing is it catches your attention. It makes you lean in and go, okay. And as a creator, that's what we want, whether it's a book cover, a book title, a album title, album song, whatever, you know, uh, words in a song. We want people to, we want to grab their attention because, um, uh, there's so much out there battling for people's attention, you know, but, um, I, think I Take in the wrong, oh, sorry, it might take in a, a person for the wrong reasons because they'd be like, oh, I'm interested in this because, yeah, I don't need God. And then they'll hear the lyrics and be like, oh, 
(laughs) (laughs) Right, right. Well, tell everybody real quick where they can find you. And that'll be in the description of the uh, the podcast when it goes out too. So, yes, um, the best place to um, find me is my website, which is um, www.clairecunninghammusic, C-L-A-R-E-C-U-N-N-I-N-G-H-A-M music.com. And on there pretty much is every um, social link and places you can hear my music, watch the videos, even my memoirs up there. I've not gone really much public with that, but I've still been working on it. But you can definitely get a taste of what that's about right now on there too. Awesome. Okay. Well, you heard it from Claire Cunningham today. She is an amazing woman who is out in the world, empowering others, inspiring others, who has empowered herself to go from a place of trauma and and challenges and all kinds of things she's overcome in her life. And she's using it in her work as um, singing, songwriting, and, um, as a platform to help others with mental health awareness. And, you know, there, there is a, a healing that can happen from wherever you are. And it just, it's one step at a time, one day at a time, right? It is absolutely. Don't, yeah. You know, you don't have to climb the entire staircase. Or- <laughs> Right. That's a cliche, but you really do. If you can just learn to just yeah, put one foot in front of the other and take it in the moment as it as it comes at you. Um, and yeah. we, we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, and sometimes we can forward plan and think too much ahead when we really need to be just present. Right, absolutely. Well, I thank you, Claire, so much for being on today. Oh my gosh, so excited to have you and here with me and talking about this very very important subject. And, um, I'm so grateful, you know, you and I both agree there's divine meetings that happen all the time. And this ours was a divine meeting. Absolutely. 100%. Um, (laughs) So we'll have you back on soon and go check out Claire Cunningham and her music. And, um, I'll put the website in the description. So if you're driving, you know, you don't have to try to write it down or remember it, but, um, thank you again for joining us and, uh, we'll be back soon. Have a blessed day, everybody. Thank you for being a part of our audience today. Please subscribe, like, and share the podcast with your friends, and tune in for the next episode of Cover to Cover for all things in the author world.